Hey. Hi, Triple. It's Maria from BNH. I heard you were speaking Hi, at Optic this year, so I wanted to introduce you to the audience. Do you have time for absolutely. 21 questions? Yes, absolutely. Let's do this. Awesome. So, why don't we get right into it? Go on. I'm ready. So, what do you do for a living? I am a photographer. Um, I travel and shoot indigenous communities around the world. It has been a passion project which started as my thesis. And uh, now I have been shooting every once, in, once or twice a year. Um, I've been working on this project. But uh, otherwise, I am a full-time photographer too. I have been working with uh, brands around America and helping them create content. So that's cool. what I do. And so from the look of your portfolio, you mostly shoot portraits, but not your standard style headshot, right? Can you tell me a little bit more about what you do? Right, so my work kind of falls between documentary, fine art and portraiture. Um, I, my primary objective is to travel, explore new cultures, meet new people, um, and uh, connect. And once that happens, if the camera's part of my body, so if, if, if we reach a point where we could make a portrait, I make a portrait. Um, I try to photograph what basically is uh, my observation for a minute, an hour, or a day into that photograph and translate that to my audience. And so you mentioned a lot of what you do is about traveling. So has this quarantine affected your workflow? Um, yes and no. I was uh, planning a trip to Papua New Guinea. So that got pushed back. So I was a little bummed about it. But on the other side, uh, my creative agency, I have never been more busier. You know, like it's, 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 I've never been busier. Um, it's just uh, so everyone wants to create content, wants to get online. So yes and no. Uh, but it's gonna, pop thinking it's gonna happen soon. Great. And so what even got you started in photography? What got me into photography is such an interesting question. So I grew up in India, um, an extremely impatient person, um, wanted to, I, I had I had definitely had the fire in me that I want to do something. Um, I didn't know what to do, but I wanted to do something. Um, but there was a lot in me which just had to come out. and. Uh, being impatient really didn't help. So I grew up as a, like I used to paint. Um, my mama used to encourage me a lot of uh, painting. I used to do that, but somehow I was not able to express enough or probably you know needed a lot of skills to do it. So no, it didn't happen. I tried my hands in music. Nope, it didn't happen. And then I stumbled upon photography. And then I realized that at that time, I thought that, wow, this this kind of gives me a very quick expression of what I'm thinking or what I want or what I want to communicate to the world. Um, it stuck to me. I came to America uh, to meet a friend and I was waiting uh, under FIT. She went to FIT and um, I saw admissions and I went up and I said, hey, do you guys teach photography? Do you guys photo I had absolutely no idea of how and not anything. I was here literally for a couple of weeks. And then they said, yes, we do. Um, and then I applied and yeah, I was in FID. So that's that's how I got into FID. And do you remember the camera that you were using to kind of practice your skill? Absolutely. It was a, a Nikon D3100. Yeah, that was, that was the camera I started with. And so once you started kind of getting into your photography skills and mastering what you do, what got you so passionate and interested in indigenous communities? So coming to New York, kind of, you know, meeting all these people from different parts of the world, making friends with them, kind of even fueled that. I was introduced to works of um, Steve McCurry, Salgado, James Nakwe. I ended up interning with Steve McCurry for a year, six, six months or a year. Um, and that kind of just like inspired me so much that uh, after in my first year uh, in the summer break I and my friend Alex 
kind of just decided let's go to Ethiopia. I decided that I'm gonna go every break, either winter or summer, I'm gonna go explore a new culture and uh, come back with stories. And in, in the end, it just basically fed my soul. And is there a certain photo or maybe a project or an experience that kind of helped you become more noticed? Um, I think I recollect a couple of them. The first one was a project about Aghuris uh, in India before I came to FIT. Um, Aghuris is um, it's basically a group of uh, you know religious men in India who who um, have given up the worldly um, desires and live a very different kind of lifestyle. Um, so and and. At that time, we're talking 10 years ago, like approaching that kind of subject was fairly considered. There were a lot of taboo, there was a lot of like, you know, uh, superstition around the subject. There was a lot of, um, they can curse you, they can bless you, they're very dangerous, they can, like, you know, they eat human meat. Like, it, there, was, there was a lot of misconception about it. So, sure. uh, it was fairly a difficult subject, but I was somehow able to go and photograph. Mm -hmm. Um, them in, at a festival so that kind of uh, was my initial you know like people started knowing me as a photographer oh there's this guy who's doing this kind of photography travel photography and again there was no concept of like hey this is documentary photography hey this is travel photography it was just a thing a teenage me going out there and you know looking for adventure and like I want to do it Cool. And then I feel like lighting is kind of a puzzle piece in your photography style that really makes you stick out how did you master those lighting skills? Um, lighting skills, I think I mastered my lighting skills with uh, people like Cliff Hausner. Uh, I met Clifford uh, in, in FIT when he, was giving, when he was giving a presentation and I, we became friends. Um, and ever since we've been buddies and I assisted him a lot. I think assisting people on sets, you learn a lot. Uh, when you're pushed into corners and when you're pushed into creating lighting and in challenging situations, I think that's when you learn the most. That's great. And so what is your go-to camera and lens? Uh, my go-to camera and lens is, um, well, iPhone to start with. It's in my pocket. So if I see something, my phone comes out the first. Uh, but uh, still recently I was shooting with a Nikon D800E um, but I wanted to move to medium format so um, I met Fuji I met someone from Fuji in uh, Photo Plus Expo last year and uh, I was having a conversation with them and they were super awesome and super kind enough to send me their medium format camera the GFX S50 and uh, I have fallen, literally fallen in love with it and uh, it is it is a phenomenal camera and I, I really only have had it for a couple of weeks but like it, it definitely is my go-to camera. I walk around the streets with the medium format to just like shoot <laughs> on the street. It, it sounds ridiculous but I, I cannot get over it. It's so beautiful. And so you're speaking at this year's B&H's Virtual Optic. Is teaching a big part of your career as well? Well, teaching, um, yes. I have always uh, been interested in sharing the knowledge um, that I have gained. And uh, I've also learned, and for some reasons I can kind of explain those things very easily. I can like break it down. I know lighting can be very, it can get a little, if you've, if you've never learned, or if you don't know what you're getting into, it can be a little overwhelming. So a few years ago, I came up with an idea of like teaching a workshop in Ethiopia or taking people with me to Ethiopia. Um, and then similarly, taking people with me to India. Um, so I have been teaching a lot of workshops around the world and even locally. Um, then I was in, I was in AD Adams workshop as a student. And then ever since every year after that, for five years, I go back to teach like with Profoto. Um, and we go out with the students and help them kind of get the image they want. Um, so yes, teaching has been a big part. Um, Very and cool. I really enjoy it. I love to share the knowledge. And so have you been teaching or watching any virtual workshops during this quarantine? 
No, I have not been teaching, but of course I have a group of people I constantly, you know, communicate with. They kind of reach out for help and vice versa. And so a lot of what you do is portraits, but do you dabble in other style of photography as well? Yeah, this I, I, I do. I do I do tend to. I have been doing a lot of street lately. Um, and I, I definitely feel like I want to diversify my portfolio a lot more. So this 2020 has been here, so consciously I am putting more, more efforts into different genres. So what are some tips for somebody looking to create portraits like yours? Um, tips to creating portraits uh, like I do, I think um, the first and the foremost is um, try and be open. No, don't judge. Um, um, then, you know, try and know someone before you kind of point the camera in the face. Uh, it's important to slow down, it's important to connect, it's important to know the person you're photographing better before um, you photograph them. If there's a resistance from your side or their side, you know, if you, if you guys cannot meet each other at the on the same level, I don't think you'll be able to create a beautiful picture. So definitely like slow down and try to connect before you kind of take a picture. Use lights or don't use lights, it doesn't matter. In my case, I use lights. I use normally use a Pro Photo uh, B10, B10 Plus or a B1. Um, and I use a three foot octa or a two foot beauty dish or a three foot octa. So um, basically, it's 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 a it's a pretty simple setup for me. I uh, have a light in the front or um, on a little above someone's head, and then I have a light behind the person, uh, the, uh, behind a white kind of a screen. So the light behind the screen blows out the background. It also works as a side light and a back light, and the light in the front. Uh, will help me light the person's uh, front. So I think, I, I don't think I've ever shot with three lights. Two lights is my thing. And I'm very comfortable with it. And also, because I'm traveling so much, uh, I need my kit to be very small. You know, like, and, and, and it has not been easy. I've finally reached this point in my life where I have been able to kind of finalize my gear. And I know exactly what I need to. So yeah, this is my go-to light. I think they're pretty cool. Profoto does a good job. Great, and so your friend Cliff from Profoto mentioned that you're a vegetarian. What's your favorite dish to eat? I was wondering how did you find out the question that I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> I was really wondering, like, how did she figure out I'm a vegetarian? Um, so uh, my favorite dish to eat is, uh, uh, it's an Indian dish of course, and it's called pao bhaji. It's basically a lot of vegetables boiled and spiced and smashed together and you eat it with uh, bread, you eat it with bread. And so you mentioned you weren't born in the US, you're from India and from traveling and installing yourself into different cultures, has being from another culture helped you in your photography and your approach? Oh absolutely, As I think as we just spoke about this earlier, but uh, coming to new, like it, growing up in India definitely had a certain perspective about the world and how it functions and how it works but then coming to America especially in New York City when you are in the middle of all this you know like in a hot pot of cultures absolutely like it's there is no question about it that it, it helped me see things differently and especially like in coming to New York you know that that, that kind of go-getter attitude like your work ethic your solve the problem you know like they get the job done kind of like that attitude and so you've traveled a lot. Do you have a favorite place to travel to? Um, a favorite place to travel to, uh, the first place which comes in my mind is Ethiopia. Uh, mm -hmm. I, get this, I get this question a lot in my life. What's your favorite place to go? Of course. And it's definitely Ethiopia because uh, I think the people, the food, the love, the openness, you know, the level of content, um, the level of satisfaction in the communities um, you just realize that money is not everything and you you know it's it's just a different kind of vibe 
And is there a place that you haven't been to that you really want to go to? Yeah, as I said, I was planning a trip to Papua New Guinea um, with a couple of people. Uh, so I think that's on my list. But if, you, if you're talking about the list, I have a long list. I want to go to Mali, <laughs> I want to go to Namibia, I want to go to India, do a few things. I think, I think it's an hour of photograph some cultures in America, um, Sweden. And I'm sure this is a hard one to answer, but do you have a favorite photo shoot that you've done? Beauty just a favorite photo shoot I've done? Yeah. Absolutely a difficult one. Um, but because all of these photos have so many stories around it, which kind of make them so close to my heart. But uh, one which kind of like, you know, jumps off is um, this, uh, I was photographing this person named Bali in Ethiopia. He was a uh, Hummer. Uh, a Hummer tribe. He was a local tribal king, uh, and my guide and my friend Imi said, "Hey, let's. I have a friend. Let's go meet him. It's kind of a drive for like four or five hours, but I think it's gonna be cool. He lives on a hill. Um, just lives him by himself with the family. I think you'll enjoy it. So we went there. We drove for four or five hours to get there. Um, and uh, Bali met me, but he was, you know, he was not sure who I was. I was a stranger in his house. And uh, he said, no, um, just, I mean, the conversation about can I take a picture did not come up, you know? And uh, I really yeah. wanted to, but it just did not reach a point where I could ask him to take a picture. So we ended up spending two days there in that we camped there. And then, um, uh, finally, Bali kind of agreed to kind of take a picture and he's like, I'll let you take one picture. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I'll step out of my heart, you take a picture and that's it. And I want to make sure that nobody sees you taking a picture of me because I don't want to lose my respect in the community. And I totally respected that and I understood that. And I was absolutely okay to not take a picture, but he was fine. Um, so yeah, that it, it, and then I have one frame of that picture. And so have you ever thought what would you be if you weren't a photographer? If I was not a photographer, I'd definitely be an interior designer or an architect. And aside from your camera, what's your favorite piece of gear? Aside from my camera, my favorite piece of gear, I'll walk you in my in the office uh, because I have been um, lately trying a lot of FPV, like flying a drone. Um, and learning how to do FPV, so I think my favorite piece of uh, gear right now is this Mobila 7 and uh, this Frysky X7. So I'm, I'm learning to be a pilot. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Best piece of advice I have ever received in my life. Um, in India they say there's a, there's a saying, if I translate it, which basically means that work but do not work for a reward or do not expect a reward but put in the work current and if there were to be a movie about your life who would play you oh man difficult question <laughs> uh again as i said grew up in india bollywood has had a huge impact on me uh okay. and one of the actors uh his name is piyush mishra he's a poet lyricist actor writer uh i absolutely connect to his philosophy and the way he thinks and his poems and his um, ideas, so absolutely him, yeah, no question. Great. And last question, who should we interview next? Oh, Cliff, please. <laughs> he, he, you have to kind of get all that knowledge out of him and throw it out in the world. Um, yeah, put it out there. Uh, I think you should definitely do it. Really cool. So we'll call him up and thank you so much again for answering all of my questions. You can get back to your work. I won't bother you anymore. <laughs> of course. Thanks. Thank you so much.